Hello there. This video is in response to an email from a potential user who was inquiring about how to go about creating a reveal or teletype or some type of a typewriter effect using TextMesh Pro. And although I had done one of those videos about six months ago to show that functionality in TextMesh Pro, the example that I used uh, didn't have any rich text tags. So I thought, you know, I may as well redo this video to show one that does use uh, rich text tags and show how the system actually works with that as well. So let's uh, take a closer look at what we've got here. So what I've got right now is the TextMesh Pro uh, component. It's the normal TextMesh Pro component that uses the normal mesh renderer. Uh, the reason I'm using that one as opposed to the UI uh, text mesh pro component that works with the canvas renderer is simply because with the canvas renderer you, you don't get to see the mesh itself and I thought for this example it might be more interesting to see the mesh itself. Um, how do you add these two text mesh pro components? Pretty simple. You go to create and you're going to go to 3D object and choose the text mesh pro component here. This one is the one that works with the canvas render. Uh, sorry, this is the one that works with the mesh renderer. And then if we go to UI and text mesh pro text here, this is the one that works uh, with the canvas renderer. So um, the next thing I want to focus on real quick is the text, uh, not the text, but the font that I'm using right now is Bangers SDF. So I created the font asset using text mesh pro with the built-in font asset creator right here. And I simply selected the true type font that matches bangers and I created my sign distance field font asset and that's the one that I'm using. Now the text that I'm using here is kind of plain, looks really nice, but it's rather plain. So let's actually give it some style and in TextMesh Pro, we, in case you're not familiar with TextMesh Pro, we can easily through our material properties alter the look of our text. So if I want to add like an outline, I could do that, you know, in real time dynamically. Uh, I could add a shadow and so on and so forth. But the current material that I have assigned is the default material that is part of the font asset. So I don't want to change this one. So what I did is I created uh, some material presets that I frequently use with TextMesh Pro and I created those by using the context menu here. So right click on the material and I created a duplicate which automatically gets assigned and then I get to rename it and, and that's how you create those. So here I have this bangers uh, SDF shadow so I'll just drag it here and now we can see that it automatically assigned that material preset with the settings that I wanted on the object. Now the shadow here, uh, it's a hard shadow. I'd like it to be a soft shadow so I can come here to my underlay panel, like for example, disable the shadow. But in this case, I said I wanted it to be a soft shadow, like so. So good enough. Now let's focus on our reveal effect. So as you can see here, this is the text that I'm using and it does have like a bunch of rich, rich text tags in it. Now this bangers font doesn't have any lowercase characters, so everything's uppercase, but I did want to emphasize the word revealing and have like the letter R and the word be bigger. So the way that I did that is first I made this small caps, uh, which means the uppercase letters remain uppercase and the other, which in theory would be lowercase if the font had lowercase, would appear as smaller uppercase letters. The way that I did this here is I simply used the size tag to increase the size of this word and I increased the size to match the ascender of the normal text at 36 point size with this larger size one here. So that way it just looks like I'm emphasizing the word reveal, which looks kind of cool. Um, then I did a similar thing with the text mesh pro word. Uh, so I'm using the size tag here, 125%. And then we have also superscript that's being used right here. So how would we go about implementing this reveal effect? Well, at first glance, we might think, well, let's just take the string and sort of pass it one character at a time and kind of build it up until the whole thing is revealed. Well, there's a few problems with that. First, we're talking about doing a bunch of string operations and doing all this concatenation of the string would result in a bunch of garbage collection, which is not a really good thing. Second, if you start looking at all the rich text tags, you'd have to implement some mechanism to deal with the tags because, you know, you don't want to show those. Uh, so you'd have to figure out some way to parse them and now the complexity would scale. And then lastly, the more challenging problem is if you consider word wrapping. 
So let me uh, change this here and go where uh, the word character would kind of fit. Okay, so here the word character fits on this line, but let me shrink the size of the container where it doesn't fit anymore. So let's imagine again, we're feeding this one character at a time. And once we would get past the, the one, then we'd have space, then it would start to lay out the word character. So right, it would spell out character. And then when it gets to the last letter, it would realize it doesn't fit and suddenly most of the word would magically disappear from here and pop on the second line so that the R can be added. So that would look kind of goofy. So ultimately we need a different way to implement this reveal effect. So if we look here, I have this little teletype script attached to the text mesh bra object. Let's just enter play mode and see what's going to happen. So right now we're revealing the character uh, characters one at a time. And if I play with word wrapping while it's doing this, you'll see that it automatically adjusts for whatever I'm doing. So whatever method I implemented, it plays nice with word wrapping. It has no issue with rich text, text tags. It even plays nice with all the alignment. And basically, it could even play nice if I change the font size or any of these things. So at runtime, I can make any changes I want, and it will always do what it's supposed to do the way it's supposed to do it. So how are we achieving this? Let me reset my uh, point size here to 36. And let's go take a look at the script that makes this possible. So we're in Visual Studio, and we see that this script is a simple model behavior. I declare a private field of type text mesh pro to hold a reference to the text mesh pro component. Then in start, which I've made a coroutine, we're going to get a reference to this text mesh pro component if it exists. If one does not exist, then we'll add one. This gives us the ability to start with an empty game object, uh, and then it will basically add the component at that point if a reference uh, of one is not found. Then we have this region, which is just collapsed. That's because I've been using this script to test a bunch of stuff so everything in there is commented out so we don't need to worry about it. Then we get the count of visible characters for the text object and this is done by using this utility class called text info which has a bunch of information about the text object like character count, space count, word count, line count, page count, uh, sprite count. It also includes substructures uh, like an array called character info, which has information about every single character, whether or not they're visible, uh, their position, and which index they're using in a mesh array. There is another one called word info, which is another array. There is line info, which has information about every line. Uh, there's uh, then the mesh info, which has all the mesh information in there, so you could further manipulate it. And after this, uh, I'm done explaining the reveal. I can show a few examples of what you can do with this text info in terms of further manipulation of what Text Mesh Pro has done in terms of laying out the object. And once that's done, we can then further manipulate it down the road. Then we uh, set up a counter, which we set at zero. We have a while loop that's going to go forever. Uh, then we get the visible count. And the visible count is going to be basically our counter modulus of the total number of characters. And we'll eventually increase this counter. And once we get, let's say we have 50 visible characters, once it gets to 50, then this visible count will be back to zero. And it's just going to keep looping like that forever. Um, so then here in Text Mesh Pro, there's this property called max visible characters. So and we're going to basically set that to the visible count. So we're basically telling Text Mesh Pro every frame how many characters we want to show. There's another similar property called max visible lines where we could tell Text Mesh Pro how many lines to display on any given frame. So what this does is basically Text Mesh Pro will lay out the text object, uh, factoring in all the rich text tags, the word wrapping and all that stuff. And it will do so uh, regardless of whether or not the characters are visible. So it will always do what it's supposed to do. And then in the second phase, Text Mesh Pro will take all this layout information and, and construct the mesh. And this is where the visible count comes in, where as it's doing the mesh and it's iterating through each character for the second time, it says, hey, this guy's not visible, so I'm just going to degenerate uh, the triangles or the vertices for this character, and that way it won't be visible. So that's basically how we do it. Text Mesh Pro always lays out the text object, 
like it's supposed to do it, and then subsequently we're controlling visibility. Here we basically check for if the visible count is equal to the total count, then we simply want to pause for one second before we do it again. So let's go take a look at this in action again. So I'm going to enter play mode, and as I described, it will reveal one character at a time, and then when it gets to the end, it will pause for one second and then start over. So this works with basically everything, including auto sizing, font sizing. So if I change the size of this container while it's running, it will do exactly what it's supposed to do at all times. Okay, so having said that, let me stop this thing right here and go show a little bit more information about this uh, text info class. Um, and at this point, if all you're interested in is how to reveal the text, blah, 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 hey, you can stop here and uh, it's only been four minutes. But if you want to know more, take a look at the rest of the stuff. So I'm going to go to my demo scenes and load this uh, Halloween example here. Here we have another script called Vertex Attribute Modifier, and this script uses this uh, text info class that I talked about along with the substructures to get information about each character so it can access the vertex attributes to further modify them. So if I enter play mode, basically what's happening is the text mesh pro component does the layout, factoring in you know the word wrapping and all the different properties of the text mesh pro object. And once that's done, this additional script further modifies them. And what's kind of cool is as long as the properties of the text mesh pro object don't change, not, the layout is not redone. So this remains static and never changes. But should I go in here and change this at runtime, it will then redo the layout while this other component or script is still doing its modifications that it's doing here. So on the top line, we're grabbing the vertex index for each character so we can go change the vertex attributes and in this case it's the position. For the bottom line, we're doing the same thing but we're accessing the vertex colors so we can change them per character. Another example of what this uh, little script does, and by the way, these different scripts that I've been showing are all available to registered users of Text Mesh Pro. They are available on the user forum, um, and the package is called Demo and Extra Content, and it's in the beta section of the forum. Um, there's actually a video that goes over this vertex attribute modifier. It's on YouTube, and I actually show the script and describe how everything is done. But changing this little pull down here, let's change it to a wave, for example. So now instead of doing a jitter, we're just like applying a wave through the characters. Or let's go here and choose warp, which is kind of cool. So now instead of doing jittering and all that stuff, we're mapping the text on a curve. And as I change the scale, you can see the letters being bent along the curve. And lastly, I guess two more, uh, dangling. So in this case here, we're applying a matrix rotation to each character uh, before, changing, uh, before I change the pivot to center it up there. And then I just make the letters dangle at random uh, rotation angle and different speeds. Uh, and then lastly, here's a different reveal effect. So the other one was just revealing the characters. This one is actually rotating the mesh for each character from uh, 0 to 90 degrees on the y-axis. And although this is not meant to be seen necessarily in 3D, you can get a sense here of what's going on, which is pretty cool. So I will uh, wrap it up here. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed the video and it was informative. Should you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post. And thank you for watching.